fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> When the West was young, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the length and breadth of seven states. No man did more to bring law and order to the frontier. Now let us take the trail of adventure to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, silver! We're heading for the wheat country near Graceville! Hi-oh! The greater part of Texas was suited only to raising cattle. But the soil around Graceville was so fertile and well watered that even those settlers who'd started out as ranchers soon turned to farming. Jeff Halstead was one of these. His wheat fields covered over a hundred acres. And as our story opens, his grain is ripe and ready for harvest. Jeff's wife, May, is sitting on the front porch of their home. It is late afternoon, and she watches her husband as he walks slowly toward the house. My, Jeff, you look all tuckered out. I've been clear over to the South Forty today, honey. Here, you take this chair. Uh-huh. Ah, there. That feels right comfortable. I was just thinking, Jeff. Huh? I wouldn't trade this for all the money in the world. Trade what, May? Oh, our house and fields and all. Yep, we got lots to be thankful for. They ain't many folks can settle down in their old age feeling as well provided for as we are. And with three growed boys out in the world and going great guns. Uh, I can't help wishing sometimes that they was all to home again, just like they used to be. It's the way of life, I reckon. Yes. I get the same hankering sometimes, but they had their places to make in the world. They were such good boys. And still are, by golly. Look at how Luke paid me back that thousand dollars I loaned him so as he could get started in the freighting business. I I sometimes wonder if you did the right thing with that cash, Jeff. You mean I shouldn't have given it to Cephas Cooper? Oh, I wouldn't have minded if it had gone to pay back some of the cash we borrowed from him. <laughs> I did better than that. I do hope so. I used that thousand to get me an option on Cephas land. I I suppose it was all right. You're darn right it was. After harvesting. When I've sold my wheat, I'll pay him the rest of the cash. And next year, we'll have land for three times the grain we're raising now. I know. Just think, May. We'll be rich. Have you seen Mr. Cooper yet? No, but I'll get around to it soon. There's the 2500 you owe him. That comes due on the 25th. Shucks, the wheat will all be harvested and hauled to town by the 20th. There's time to spare. You sure you're getting a good price for it? <laughs> Cephas fixed that up himself. He got me a buyer. And it's all writ down what I'm to be paid. I'm a getting top prices. It's funny about Mr. Cooper. 
Everybody says he's so mean and stingy. He's sure been fine to us. But I still think you ought to ride to town soon and put him in mind of his promise. Mm, maybe he'll go tonight. If you do, I want you to take along the letters I wrote to the boys. I'll put them on the stage myself. I told Davy all about how good we was doing. Did you tell him how we was raising wheat just like he is over at Lake City? Mm-hmm. And have a letter for Steve. <laughs> just think of him being a Texas Ranger now. And I thanked Luke for the thousand dollars he paid us back. Well, I reckon the freighting business must be right profitable. And I told them all they was welcome home any time they found the chance to visit. And they are that. And by golly may, we'll show them the old folks are still good for something. Before we're done... We'll be making more cash than the three of them put together. Cephas Cooper was the richest, most influential man in Graceville. Even the sheriff did as he directed. The general story ran was a gathering place for the men in town. And among them now, we see the tall figure of the Lone Ranger, disguised and without his mask. How much are those supplies? Uh, let me see. There's five pounds of bacon and a couple of pounds of beans. Mr. Cooper! Pad rabbit! Don't be bothering me when I'm trying to figure things in my head. Oh, it's you, is it, Halstead? I just want to talk business with you for a couple of minutes. Uh, you in a hurry, stranger? I can wait. How's the wheat coming, Jeff? Fine, just fine. Ripe for cutting, ain't it? Just about. You come to see me about that cash you owe me, Jeff? Mm, partly. Let's step over here and talk. Come on. But if it's credit for grub you want, you ain't getting it. <laughs> it ain't nothing like that. Uh, this will do. Now, what is it? Have uh, you seen my wheat of late, Cephas? Where did I get the time? You figuring on paying me the cash you borrowed? Well, you know I can't do that till after harvest. Uh, you must be joking, Cephas. Land's sake, you knew the grain would have to be cut and then hauled to town before I could sell it. All right. All right. Don't waste my time, then. The stranger's waiting for me. I come about that promise you made me. You ain't forgot, have you? What promise? <laughs> Darned if you ain't forgotten. Why, don't you recollect when I borrowed the cash for planting and such? You said you might loan me some more to hire men and do the harvesting? I don't recollect no such thing. But Cephas... You got a copy of the agreement we read out, ain't you? Why, sure I have. It says you're to pay me $2,500 by the 25th of this month, don't it? I ain't trying to get out of that. And it says if you don't pay me that cash by that day, your house and land and wheat is all mine. I... I don't just say... Maybe when you pay me what you owe, I can lend you some more. But I ain't fool enough to send good cash after bad. Then, then you never intended to let me have the cash for harvesting? I didn't put it in writing, did I? No, but you... If it ain't in writing, it ain't business. You, you planned this all the time. <laughs> well, it ain't my fault if I stand to gain more by foreclosing than by lending you more cash. And you took that other thousand dollars for an option on your land, knowing I'd never have the cash to take it up. <laughs> I ain't saying. You know darn well I can get a good price for my wheat if I can haul it to town. I ought to. It was me fixed up that deal for you. For yourself, you mean? It'll be you that's selling what I worked and slaved to raise. Now, look here. First off, you sold your cattle and went to farming. Then when your cash run out, you come to me for help. You you seemed right willing. I gave you 2500 And you got $1,000 from that boy of yours, Luke. And I sold you the right to my, buy my land for half what it's worth. What in blazes ain't fair about that? Half what it's worth? You did that because you figured I'd never be able to buy it. And you could just keep the thousand. That is your lookout. Why you? Don't you go threaten me, Jeff. I wish I was packing a gun. Don't you raise your hand to me. I'd like to. Boys, come here. Jeff, threaten me. What do you want us to do, Jeff? Throw the old fool out. I'll handle oh. Jeff. Throw him right out on the street. You sneaking coyote. Go on. Come on. Let me alone. Take your hands off me. You're going outside. You're going proud of Get back. Don't what? do me the fear, stranger. Leave Jeff alone, or you'll have me to deal with. Thank you, stranger. Chief is his boss around here. He's not my boss. Come along, Jeff. Stranger, I'd have given anything to be 20 years younger. I didn't need no help then. We'll get out of here. Wait! You haven't paid me for that grub you bought. I'm not taking it. Don't come back here, Jeff, unless you come with cash to pay me. There ain't much chance of that. And be sure you don't harm nothing around your place. If you do, I'll have the law on you. It's going to be mine by the 25th. And I don't mean to have you trying no tricks. Outside the store, the Lone Ranger left Jeff 
And the old man made his way home alone. He told his wife of Cephas Cooper's scheme. And together they decided to pack their few personal belongings, preparing to leave the house that had been their home for so many years. You got all my shirts packed, May? They're in this valise. I got everything else in the buckboard, I guess. Come here, Jack. What is it, honey? I... I just wanted you close to me. There, there, May. Everything will turn out all right. The, the boys was brought up here, Jeff. I know, I know. Look, there's the chair where Davy carved his initials with his knife and you spanked him. If them days were only here again, he could carve up the whole house and I'd never say a word. And over there's where Luke always used to sit when he was studying his book. I, I never did see a young'un like him for book learning. And, and it was Steve built them shelves over the window the, the time you was laid up with a sprained back and couldn't get around the house. Mm, I recollect it just as plain as if it was yesterday. You you don't suppose Davy will mind putting up with us, do you, Jeff? Well, of course he won't. No, we, we can't turn to Steve. The Texas Rangers just live as in barracks. Mm-hmm. And Luke's not married. He's with his wagons most of the time. Shucks, Davy will be glad to see us. I... I'd rather almost anybody but Mr. Cooper got this place. May, I was just a daughter and old fool. A dang idiot to think I could make a go of raising wheat. And when I think of letting Cephas talk me into giving him Luke's thousand for that option, it makes me so doggone mad I could go back to town and fight Cephas and all his sneaking friends single-handed. Jeff, Jeff. Oh, there, I... I reckon I've been a mighty poor sort of a husband to you, honey. Now, don't you be blaming yourself, Jeff. If there was only something I could do. You've got to promise me you won't stop in town to make trouble. You know as well as I do that there ain't a man there won't do Mr. Cooper's bidding. Uh, you wouldn't have a chance again him. I, I reckon we'd better get going. We can send back for anything we've left behind that's ours. Yes. Here, I'll carry the valise. You go on ahead. We'll make out, Jeff. We'll be happy again. Sure we will, honey. Uh, let's hurry, Jeff. I I can't stand to say goodbye to the house. I put the valise in the back of the buckboard. Uh-huh. There. Now give me your hand, May, and I'll help you up. Oh, I... oh it... Uh, it ain't the... Easy for me to get around as it used to be. I'll be right with you. Now don't look back, honey. We'll ride out of here just as though it didn't matter at all. Get up. Get along with you, Ned. Will it take long to get to Davy's chair? A couple of days, I reckon. Get along there. We'll make it as fast as we can. Jeff, look. There's somebody riding from town already. Mr. Cooper ain't got the right to send a man here to the 25th. Say, I've seen that white horse before. Hold on, Jeff. He's calling to you. What in blazes? Whoa, whoa there, whoa, boy. Jeff, I want to talk to you. Oh, silver old fellow. Oh, boy. You're mad. Don't you remember me, Jeff? I don't know. I, I've seen that horse before. There's something about your voice that... We met in Cooper's store yesterday. Say, you're the fellow that helped me when them no-good friends of Cephas were aiming to throw me out. Don't leave your home, Jeff. We ain't no choice, stranger. It's more than a week until the 25th. Well, we, we talked that out, and we figured it'd just make it worse staying on till the last minute. Will you go back if I promise you'll not lose your land? Huh? Go back. Stay there until you hear from me again. But what can you do? It don't seem like... Jeff, if the stranger was a friend to you once... Maybe we ought to listen to what he says. You'll not be sorry, Jeff. You you think I got a chance to keep Cephas from getting our home? A good one. Then by golly, we'll do what you say. But how Turn can Turn back you... right now. You'll see me again before the 25th. Jeff, Jeff, we ain't got nothing to lose. I'll steal And everything to gain. I don't know what he's got in mind. And I don't see how he can keep Cephas from collecting. But honey, we're doing like the masked man says. Get around there, Ned. Get around. Now go on. Get out. Go on, boy. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Thank you. 
Now to continue the story. Jeff Halstead turned from ranching to farming, planting his land with wheat. He borrowed money from Cephas Cooper and gave his property as security. But when he asked Cephas to make good a verbal promise of another loan to pay for harvesting, Cephas refused. Jeff and his wife, May, believing they would lose their home, made ready to leave and join one of their three sons. The Lone Ranger, however, persuaded them to return and stay on their property until the loan came due. As our second act opens, we see the masked man reigning in his great horse, Silver, at the small camp he shares with his faithful Indian companion, Tonto. Oh, oh, Tonto! Oh, 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 steady there! Oh, Tonto, I just talked to Jeff. Uh-huh. They were leaving their home, but I convinced them to turn back. Mm, that good thing. Were you able to get the information I wanted, Kimosabe? Tonto, get him. Where are Jeff's three boys? Dave, him Lake City. He's the one who took up wheat farming. Ah. Uh, Luke... Him, Bakerstown. Good. Steve, him, Sandy Ford. That's where the Texas Rangers have their barracks. That's right. Lake City, Bakerstown, Sandy Ford. All of them are a long way off. Mm, them plenty far. And I have to make the trip. Silver take you all right. If it weren't for Silver, it would be impossible to get there in time. Hunter right too? No, Tonto. I'll make this trip alone. I want you to stay here and see that Cephas doesn't harm Jeff and his wife before I get back. Oh, Tonto, do that. Steady, Silver. Are you going now? I can't stop to rest. There isn't a day to spare. Tonto, wait. Come on, Silver! Cephas Cooper had been told that Jeff and his wife were preparing to leave their home before the 25th. But when he learned that they had returned, his curiosity was aroused. And with one of his men, he rode out to the Holstead place. Mm. Wonder what that fool Jeff is up to. It ain't gonna do him no good to stay on. No blame right, it ain't. Jeff signed that paper giving me his place if he didn't pay me by the 25th. And he can't do it. Yeah. I seen to it nobody would work for him for nothing. You took care of that all right. There ain't a fellow around here with a nerve to go against me. When I tell them what to do, they do it. It's the worst for them. There, Jeff, sitting on his steps. Well, get to the bottom of this. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, who asked you to come out here, Sebus? This is my place, ain't it? Not yet, it ain't. Uh, it will be soon enough, so it won't make no difference. Maybe so, and maybe not. You started to leave once, didn't you? And what if I did? What I want to know is, why'd you come back? You're up to something. And by thunder, I aim to get to the bottom of it. Uh, you wouldn't believe why I stayed on, even if I told you. Yeah. He's just bluffing, Cephas. Well, he ain't fooling me none. I'm here because of a masked man. Huh? Yep, that's right. He told me to stay on, and I'm doing like he said. A masked fella? Mm-hmm. What's an outlaw to do with you? I don't know. Are you loco? I don't know that either. Now, you look here. I reckon I taught you once that I ain't the fella to fool with. And I ain't putting up with this here shilly-shallying. If you're joking with me, I don't care none for jokes. Cephas, I'll give you the straight of it. All I'm doing is waiting for the masked man to come back. What he can do for me, I don't know. But I'll tell you this. If I had anything left in the world to bet, I'd bet the last penny of it that he'll help me out of the fix I'm in. Ah, you always was a trust, an idiot. It don't hurt to trust folks. The thing is to trust the right ones. I see it now. You're going to try a trick to spoil the wheat so I won't get the good of it. You you can think what you want. If you do, I'll have you jailed. This is your place after the 25th if I don't pay you, isn't it? It is. But up to then, it's mine. Ain't that so? Well, I... Then I'm giving orders. You get out of here and stay out. I'm sorry I ever met you. But sure as sin, I don't have to see any more of you than I want. And that's none at all. Why? Do you hear me? I am a-going. And if I catch you on my property again before it's yours, I'll fill your hide with buckshot. Jeff's feeling right violent, Cephas. He's up to something. I can feel it in my bones. I got the same hunch. But it's not going to do him no good. Steady there. I'm going to have some of the boys keep an eye on him. That's a good idea. And if I can catch him doing something that ain't legal, I'll make him sorry for it if it's the last thing I do. Get up there. Get on. Get up there. Get up there. Come on. Get up In the 
the meantime, the Lone Ranger was racing across country. He headed first for Lake City, where Dave Holstead, Jeff's son, had a large wheat ranch outside town. Dave! Dave Holstead! That's me. Oh, oh Silver, old fellow. Oh, boy. A masked man. Never mind that. Your parents are in trouble. What's that? They're in danger of losing everything they own. Wait, listen. You listen to me. I want your help. Stranger, you say Cephas done that to Paul? He did, Luke. Why, the cheat no skin flint? Will you do as I ask? Do it? Say, stranger, there ain't men enough in Texas to stop me. Good. Go on, Silver, old fellow. Wait, these things I want to ask you. There's no time to wait. I know Days passed, but Jeff and his wife received no further word from the Lone Ranger. The hopes he'd built up faded, and as we find them now in the living room of their home, they are resigned to failure. May, I'd have to start harvesting that wheat today if I was to get it to town in time to pay Cephas. I, I reckon the masked man tried his best, but there wasn't nothing nobody could do. I tried myself. I went into town and asked some of the fellows if they wouldn't work for nothing. Till after harvest, when I could pay him. Yes? But that crook Cephas has got him so scared, there wasn't one of them willing. I didn't hardly hope for it. So I guess we'll have to go to Davy after all. Jeff, those men, who are they? Huh? By golly, if Cephas has sent fellas to run me off, I'll... All right, all right. I'm coming. Howdy, Paul. Davy! Ma, Ma, it's Dave. Davy, my boy, you've come to visit us. Visit nothing. I've come home to work. Where's that wheat needs cutting, Paul? Ain't no use, Davy. A dozen men couldn't get it cut in time to get to town. A dozen? Who said anything about a dozen? I got 40 men here and ran to go to work. Oh, Davy, Davy, I can't believe but it. But we ain't tools enough. We brought our own tools. We'll show you how to harvest a crop. Ain't that so, men? Yeah, I, I'm all of a tremble, Davy. It sure is good to see you. I... Oh, gosh. Now, just forget about your worries. You and Ma sit here. The boys will take care of the work. Come on, fellas. Let's see. Who right. right. All that day and well into the next... Dave and his men worked furiously. The smell of fresh cut wheat was fragrant in the air, and great loads of grain were ready to be hauled into town. As the second afternoon wore on, Dave looked up to see his father running toward him. Davy, stop! Tell them fellas to stop working. It ain't no use. What's that, Paul? I just happened to think. We ain't got the wagons to haul the grain to town. Can't you get none? Steve has seen to that. He give everybody in the county orders not to help me. Blast it. Why didn't the masked fella tell me we'd need wagons? I don't know. But you better not waste your time no more. It was good of you, Davy. And your ma and me sure appreciate what you've done, but Did I... Did you say you needed wagons? I just now told you. Then look what's coming. Why, bless my soul. Them's Luke's wagons. And there's Luke himself. Luke! Luke! Oh, we got here all right. You're just in time. What are you standing there for, Dave? Get back to work. My fellas want weed to load up in them wagons. And you just bet you'll get it. Come on, Did, did the mask follow? He sent me, Paul. I... I never thought when I set you up in the freight business that the day had come when your wagons could do me a turn like this. I'll start my boys to loading, Paul. Hold on there, Jeff. Hold on. Cephas. I've been watching everything that's happened. But you... And you ain't gonna move that wheat. Who says I can't? I says it. You're not moving this wheat till you pays me what you owe. There ain't nothing in the agreement says that. All I gotta do is pay you by the 25th. That don't mean nothing to me. This wheat's as good as mine. You ain't gonna keep me from having it. Your scheming fell through, Cephas. Yeah? 
Well, I got the sheriff. His deputies and all the men from town to see that no weeks move. The, the sheriff? He just like everybody else around here. He takes his orders from me. And I give him orders to shoot the first fellow to drive out of here with a wagon. Oh, every one of our fellows is covered by a fellow from town. And every townsman is covered by a Texas ranger. Oh, look, Steve's brought the rangers. Oh, oh, it's Steve. It's my boy, Steve. The masked man here brought me, Paul. He figured there might be trouble. I've been tricked. You can't get away with this. I ain't standing for it. You have no choice, Cephas. Stranger, I don't know how to thank you. You brought my boys together again. You brought them here just when it was needed most. Jeff, will you be able to sell your grain in time to pay, Cephas? I sure will. Blast you. Come found you. <laughs> Say, what are you laughing about, you? You? Cephas? I was remembering how you talked me into giving you that thousand dollars for an option on your land. You were so blamed anxious to get the cash. You offered the land for far less than it was worth. But I ain't taking it. Either. And now I'll be able to get your land, too. There ain't no way you can stop me. Jeff, <laughs> no. You wouldn't do that, would you? It was all put down in writing. And like you said, if it's in writing, it's business. <laughs> and from now on, I'm a businessman. <laughs> you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.